Here we have a Pentium 4 computer. Uh, it has a hyper threading architecture and it has an RTL dongle on the back side here with a coaxial cable. Uh, it goes out into the garden about 30 meters away where there is a wire antenna. It is connected with a T connector to this signal generator. And that is to be able to inject interference. I'm going to set this up to listen to local FM broadcasting. First, I have to start Linrod. There is an icon for it here. And I press S for normal mode. I'm not going to demonstrate any expert things this time. So that is S. And font scale, I make it 2. And process priority, normal. That's 0. And this is a 1024 by 768 screen. Uh, I use percentages of it, as I say no here. And 98%. There are some losses at the edges, I don't put 100 here. In the height, I make it 90%. I have to adapt for this panel down here. Uh, 90%. And then I click on the new window here and press W to save those parameters. Uh, then I have to set up the input, which is the RTL SDR dongle. I press U for that and then A to select the input and RTL USB dongle is here, it's H. I'm searching for it and there is one and there is only one so it is auto selected. For FM mode uh, the suitable lowest speed we can select is 300 kilohertz and it will be clear later why this is to be preferred above the 230 kilohertz uh, the input is the tuner as so I press 0 and the dongle is connected directly to the antenna and I'm not going to uh, check for the behavior on signals very far from the FM band so I don't need the linearity mode and there are no filters in front of the dongle so sensitivity mode is perhaps not the appropriate selection I go for the compromise which is one which is the original mode that you find in the Osmocom library and the Error of the crystal, I don't know anything about that, so I just don't, I just enter zero. And I have to select something for the output, that's B. And I don't know use port audio. And select uh, Sunblast Alive, which is in this computer. That's zero. And then X for the menu and something and then W to save the setup that is the setup that is common for all the different receive modes now I press E for the FM mode and I have to give the FM mode parameters to start with I will set the parameters that give the lowest load on the CPU uh, it's good to have a reasonably large bandwidth to make the transform size reasonably small. With 100 Hz we got 8192 for the FFT size. Uh, If I make the window different, I make it not the sine squared, but the sine function itself. That's one here. 
uh, it makes the transform half as big, but it's still 4096, and it may be too big for the cache of a small CPU. So I increase the bandwidth and I make it, let's say, 400 hertz. And we have a Fourier transform of size 1024. That should be good for CPU, lo CPU load optimization. The first forward FFT, uh, they are a little bit different, these implementations. And uh, for this processor and probably for most processors, if not all, uh, the fastest version is number two. But it may differ, uh, so you can try on your system. And maybe on uh, ARM processors you don't have this choice. I think it's an assembly routine, but I don't actually remember. Uh, it's an 8-bit AD converter in the dongle. Uh, that means that uh, the noise floor is 8-bit higher than it is on a 16-bit system. It means that the noise floor will be very high. So I make this about 200 times smaller. Uh, that is, let's say, first FFT amplitude. I can make it 8. And that's all. I press enter to go to the next and no funny things. First mixer bandwidth reduction is now one. It means that the bandwidth will be 150 kilohertz. That is about the minimum one can have for FM with a reasonable sound quality. And the window for the third FFT, I make that a sign window also. Put one here, and uh, the output sampling speed, 48 kilohertz. It's not necessary to run it as fast as that. I cannot hear 24 kilohertz. I can't even hear 12, but maybe others can, so I can suggest 24 kilohertz here. That's for this sound card uh, that actually can do 24 kilohertz. If you have another sound card that cannot do it, it's a bad idea to select 24 kilohertz and have the CPU to upconvert it. Then it is better to do the upconversion within Linrad. Uh, output delay margin, it's a standard 200 milliseconds. Uh, if the machine is slow, uh, there is a need for more here. I make it half a second, that's 500 milliseconds. And this is all, I press enter. And here we have the dongle running. There is a default frequency, 97 megahertz. Uh, I make it 91, because somewhere near to that we have the local uh, one of the local stations that I want to listen to. Uh, then I can step the frequency. If I just step it with the arrow, ar arrow, you see it steps half a megahertz. That's far too much in this situation. So I make it the step smaller by right clicking here and I put 0.01, that's 10 kilohertz. And then I can step upwards a bit no uh, 90.5 I don't remember exactly what frequency I'm looking for sorry 90.5 there, is, there are still bugs occasionally in Linrad. Someday I will fix this one also. And you can see stations coming in here. 
and uh, there are two problems. This is the one. This is an FM station, 90.7. That is the local uh, Sveriges Radio Program 1, as we say here. Uh, I want to have the center spur outside the passband, and I want to have this frequency, the center, halfway between the center spur and the band edge. Now, maybe I make this window a little bit smaller, as you see, and you can see this is close to a good position. So I click on the signal here, and not quite as loud, something like that. And it's a terrible quality because the bandwidth is far too small. So I open the filter. It, it was a great to realize the potential. Like, like that. The bridge could, could unlock that potential. Men i Derry har nyheten om brobygget väckt starka känslor. So we can listen with this Pentium 4 and the quality is fine. And I press T to get a little bit more about the timing. The uh, routine for the dongle itself takes 4%. The wideband FFT, uh, that's for this spectrum and the waterfall, it's about 5%. And then the FM detector, that's expensive. It takes 35 percent. John Kelly, the reason for the high load on the RTL dongle is that the uh, DMA rate is 293 hertz. That means that the buffers are small and the drive routine for the USB system is called 300 times per second nearly. The reason for that is that I asked for a small FFT size and Linrad believes that it is because I want a rapid response. But in this case it's because I want to optimize the cache usage. So I will go now and tell Linrad to use uh, larger buffers. That's X and then X again, and U for the input parameters. And here we have C, change maximum and minimum DMA rate. So I press C, and I enter. Linrad was free to set anything between 30 and 300, and it did set nearly 300. That's just because of the, uh, small, the small size of the first FFT. But now I set the minimum 10, and then I set the maximum to 10 as well. This means that the buffers will last for 0.1 second, causing a delay that would be unacceptable in some circumstances, but now I'm just listening to FM, so the delay doesn't matter at all. X, and don't forget to save that with W, and back to the FM screen and click the signal and I press T to see what happened to the timing. You can see now that the DMA rate is only 9 Hz and on the output side it is 6 Hz. And you can see that the, uh, the load is now 10 times smaller but the load on the output side is a little bit higher. It's a little bit more difficult for Linrad to manage the output. Uh, this could be optimized, but it's still a pretty low contribution to the total load. Uh, we have now 36% on the uh, narrow band processing. Uh, I can switch off the stereo 
inte Here. mitt socialdemokrat Click. för att vilja lämna so now it's mono and it is a little bit easier and I put the stereo back now it's time to investigate the dynamic range situation uh, I turned, turned the knob on the signal generator I make the interference a little bit stronger. And tune a little bit again. So now the signal generator reads minus sixty-two dBm. And I press T now to see, sorry, I press A to see the amplitudes rather than the timing. Here we have a ar- margin of 9 dB only to saturation. Uh, I turn up the signal generator. And here... We run into situation nearly. It is 40 minus 48 dBm. We were at 62, so this is only 14 dB. I have to reduce the gain of the dongle. Uh, you can do that here. We don't have any problem because of that. I don't hear any noise, maybe, if I would listening when the voice was silent. Of this man talking, uh, I press Z, zero, to zero, this peak cold indicator. I can now bring up the level of the interferer. Uh, it was at minus 62, so I go to minus 42. As here, we are 10 dB from saturation and 20 dB above the desired signal. And I tune the frequency. So I go downwards, and then you can see when it goes when it goes outside here, it comes in from here. That is aliasing. And we have some interference of the alias signal, and then the alias goes here, comes here, and then it comes in here again, the aliasing signal, and here it is, and here it is. Now I continue downwards. And what happens here is that the signal level comes up and becomes strong. And this is this is only uh, 20 decibels above the desired signal. And the frequency is about 1 megahertz below the desired signal. I think 
The reason for this interference, I can continue downwards, and we have the next one. And now we are outside the 2 megahertz bandpass filter of the E4000 tuner. And the problem here is that uh, inside the RTL chip, I don't know what frequency it is used for so using to sample, but anyway, uh, the, it is fed with a bandwidth of 2 megahertz from the tuner. Uh, it suppresses signals a little bit above uh, uh, the Nyquist frequency, but it doesn't suppress well at about 1 megahertz. Uh, so the only way of getting improved performance here uh, is to increase the sampling speed and that is possible on this computer with a Pentium 4 in it but it could be a problem on slower computers like slow arm systems for example so uh, what we do is just simply X X and U and I have to set up the input once more, so I press A and H and it finds the same and I go for uh, 2 megahertz sampling speed 2 megahertz that's quite a bit higher and uh, do the same as before, 0 and 1. And no uh, error known. And x, and I write this down to have the new parameters, and then go to the FM mode. Now the sampling rate is different, I have to set up the parameters here again and now the size is 32,000 uh, and that's quite a lot I go for let's say 3 kilohertz bandwidth and the window will now be 1 and again the most efficient FFT routine and amplitude 8 sampling at 2 megahertz uh, what is the frequency I want uh, for 1 I get 1 megahertz 2 gives 500 kilohertz 3 gives 250 4 gives 125 I will try 4 that might be a too narrow bandwidth for the FM detector but we will see and the window only 1 and 500 here and the output sampling speed again 24 kilohertz And now the station is still at the same position as before relative to the center and I can click on it and this works and the timing uh, 42% 37% in total load and 42 for the most heavy thread which is the FM detector now I can go back with the signal generator again here, and we are 20 dB stronger than the FM station and I go down and 
så ska det handla om medicin som blir dyrare. För i januari så betalade patienter 8 miljoner för läkemedel. And here comes the alias signal. And now it is suppressed by the tuner. Om medicin inte vet om det ingår eller inte så blir det också en överraskning för patienten vid kassan i apoteket. This 20 dB stronger signal doesn't call any interference anymore. Only if the desired signal is near the passband edge, then the uh, alias signal would be a problem. And now I can bring up the signal level, it's minus 42. Now it is 40 dB above the desired signal, minus 22. And of course when it comes into the passband, it will cause saturation. I press A for amplitudes to be able to look at it. Here. But once it comes outside the 2 MHz passband of the tuner, uh, it's suppressed by the tuner. And it doesn't hurt the desired signal. I press A. And A again. And I go up 10 dB more. So now the signal is 50 decibels above the desired signals. And you can see there are a lot of stuff now. And the performance we see here will be affected by what gain setting mode is done for the tuner. Uh, this is now the Osmocom setting, which is a compromise. Now the sound quality isn't quite okay. Uh, you can hear on the S's, and if this was music we could even hear it worse. The reason is the narrow bandwidth. To see better I can expand this window, and you can see the frequency scale. Uh, I can make the bandwidth even a little bit narrower. It is now uh, 660, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 or 100 kilohertz, something like that. And the maximum is nearly 125, and that's clearly not wide enough for wideband FM. So back with T to see the timing, we have 37%. Uh, I will double the bandwidth of the baseband signal, that's X and for parameters P, and then enter, enter, and I make this bandwidth reduction uh, 3 instead of 4. It means uh, 2 megahertz divided by 8 rather than 2 megahertz divided by 16. And we will see what happens. Uh, so I click the signal, and press T. The load from the FM, from the baseband and FM detector is nearly twice as high, but the total load is still only 50%, so this is okay. There is not yet any improvement of the sound quality because I haven't changed the filter yet, but I can now click here 
Uh, and you can see uh, I can now increase the bandwidth and I no longer want to be as close to the center as we wanted before when the sampling speed was low so I can go down here and click on the new frequency and now I can open the bandwidth to allow the full bandwidth of this FM signal I make this zero to see the noise floor and maybe eight would be better and here you can see that the signal stretches out here and out here and the proper bandwidth is about that and the total load is 54% or something and this means that the Pentium 4 with uh, hyper threading is good enough for the RTL dongle. I can even make the uh, filters a little bit better. The, the uh, usage of only a sign function for the filter that creates aliases in the close range uh, and with the limited dynamic range from the hardware in this case it doesn't really matter so I will try to see if we can hear them och bara just i det ögonblick den utför en sån väg att den inte blir politisk utan tillför politiken en uppmärksamhet som politiken själv allt för so, This is the interference It's an FM modulated signal Now When I go outside here Vit svit av att ena faruxalt and I make it stronger press A to see the level and bring it up this is the maximum I can have with this RF gain and now if the signal comes close you can see it just but when it goes outside here it will come in here on this side due to aliasing but due to the limited dynamic range of the dongle we don't see it here because the AD converter goes into saturation uh, before problems occur. So there is no reason to use a better window than the sign window for the RTL dongle. At least not when using it this way. It is possible to improve the Dalang range by selecting the sensitivity gain mode and bring uh, set the noise floor low but uh, that is an extremist operation that probably not would be suitable for a very slow computer now I have added a 30 decibel attenuator and set the gain here for a somewhat noisy reception. I hope it goes into the camera that you can hear that we have a noise level here. It's running in stereo mode. If I go for mono here, 
Han är med och skanderar en kvinna vid den ockuperade stadshuset i Danes. Barrikaderna har uttryckats för att skydda den utropade självständiga folkrepubliken. Under hela dagen har möteslutare eld av hundratal som stöder aktionen och kräver att en folkomröstning hålls senast 11 maj om självständighet och rätt att ansluta för Ryssland. Men en ny opinionsundersökning visar att en majoritet av Danetskvarna är drygt 65%. Vi vill fortsätta vara en del av Ukraina och inte det är en splittring av Intensiva förhandlingar har pågått mellan separatisterna och Danetsk läns guvernör Sergej Tarota under dagen. Inrikesministern har givit en 48 timmars tidsfrist innan situationen ska vara löst vilket betyder att senast i morgon kvinnorna har lämnat byggnaderna och lagt ner eventuella vapen. Mariana som lövgren Donetsk. Okay. Minst 30 människor har dödats i Centralafrikanska republiken i strider mellan kristen milis och muslimska myndigheter har sedan de flesta offren civila. Sverige så läkare som skriver ut recept. But, as you can hear, nothing happens until now. Uh, the CPU doesn't have the capacity to manage this. So I have to exit, press enter, start linear again, E, and then uh, disable this third FM mode and stay at two. And if I switch off the stereo, Uh, har en dialog med uh, next to för de här branscherna, både på läkemedelssidan och apoteksidan. TLV ansvarar för prissättning och har som stereo. syfte att skapa priskonkurrens okay. mellan utbytbara läkemedel. Och man hoppas att branschaktörerna ska utveckla en webblösning.